It's so, so awesome, though, that it seems to me that a lot of kids that are in education nowadays and just public school in general have so many different types of courses that they can take in school that yeah. will help them later on in life. Like whenever I was in school, the other two programs were, well, the three programs. You had band, you had ROTC, and you had mm -hmm. nursing. And, and I loved band and stuff like that, but I didn't want to become a band teacher. I still enjoyed music, and I yeah. was in that. But I definitely didn't want to go into the Army. No offense to anybody there. I just, that wasn't my route. And right. I wasn't a nurse type either. So I just felt like there was no, there was nothing for that. And nowadays I'm seeing like how you're talking about there's uh, with the 4-H program that you do. I'm seeing carpentry programs popping up a lot, uh, mechanic programs in high school. Because, yeah, like you said, uh, I was talking with this uh, one guy. He teaches a construction class where I graduated at in Phelps. And he says that a lot of times he will get uh, what some people call the bad kids mm -hmm. in his class, the ones that aren't doing very well in their other social studies. And like you said, those are the kids that excel. And at the end of the program, they're not those bad kids anymore. No. It's, it's such a beautiful thing. I think that if the kids have more opportunity and options in school, then you'll see a lot less of the problems that you see in public education. I think so. You know, so my, I, I ended up getting my master's in vocational education too, because I do believe in that. And I think kids need options to figure out what their spark is, whether it's music, whether it's welding, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I, I used to could weld really, really good, by the way. That's good another time interesting time. fact about me. Um, cool. But, you know, welding and, and different things like that, um, uh, my advisor in college told us this story and he was a first year teacher in Western Kentucky. And he said he had one of the boys in his class that, you know, he didn't, um, he didn't do well in any other class except agriculture. And, um, he was telling us this because he said, as an educator, you don't give out, give kids black ribbons. Don't go to the teacher's lounge and talk about kids because that just associates that kid with that behavior and other teachers will come become to expect it. And um, he was telling us that he had this boy and he went to the teacher's lounge and there was this teacher um, just bad mouthing this kid, just said he was dumb, he couldn't do anything, you know, and um, said that little boy was in, uh, in his class one afternoon, he looked out and that teacher was trying to, had cars had parked a little Ari in the parking lot and she couldn't get her, um, her car out. So the thing that the teacher said about the boy was that is the dumbest kid I've ever met in my life. And so, uh, Dr. Byers was watching this woman outside struggle. And so with the boy and he said, well, why don't you go out there and and help her. And uh, so the little boy walks outside and right gets the car right out. And Dr. <laughs> Byers says he come, Dr. Byers says the kid walks in and said, that is the dumbest woman I've ever met. <laughs> so that's like perfect analogy for vocational education and how we all learn different. Um, and we all have, you know, <laughs> Oh, that is so cool. That is such a good story. <laughs>